Hello and welcome to another edition of another book review. This week I'll be reviewing Chloe Benjamin's novel The Immortalist. I'll talk a little bit about the author, go into a brief spoiler free overview of the plot, talk about what I liked about the book, what I didn't like about the book, finish off with who I'd recommend that book to, and what I will be reading next time. Chloe Benjamin has written this novel as well as an earlier novel that she released in 2014 called The Anatomy of Dreams. Uh, this novel, The Immortalist, was on many best of the end of the year list of the year it came out, uh, 2018. And I believe she received her MFA from the University of Wisconsin. Uh, she appears to be a relatively young author. And she, I think, won some awards for that earlier novel, uh, The Anatomy of Dreams, for kind of a best first novel. The Immortalist uh, has a really interesting hook. And the hook of the novel is, what would you do if you knew the exact date you were going to die. Um, we see this in play as the novel starts and opens with four siblings who go and visit a fortune teller in 1960s New York. She tells each one of them in turn when they are going to die. And the rest of the book is really an examination of what they do with this information, how it affects their lives, how it affects their decision making. Um, so I thought that was actually one of the highlights of the book. I think the strongest part of this book is actually the, the, the pitch, as it were. Uh, I think it's really easy to throw that out to someone and just see if they're interested or not. I think most people would be because I think it's a good hook. Uh, I thought the novel was really well researched. It takes place um, from about that time period, 1969 to present day, and there's probably three or four different locations that it takes place in. Some of the time periods, late 60s and late 60s New York, and there's another chapter that takes place in late 70s, early 80s San Francisco. I thought those were both written, written really, really well. The San Francisco stuff especially, uh, I think, is kind of a highlight of the writing of the book. That's because it's basically, well, I don't want to get into why that is other than because I think it is a spoiler, um, but just to say that it's really, really well researched, clearly. I think, too, uh, the author does a good job of explaining kind of the family, family dynamic and also kind of showing how it changes over time as time goes by. Um, those are some things that I liked. Some things that I had a little bit harder time with. Um, I think the book peaks pretty early. I think the emotional impact of the book hits uh, hard about the first quarter of it. Um, I think the two most interesting of the four siblings come in the first half of the book. In the second half of the book, two of the characters, in my opinion, are, are not as interesting. One of them in particular, uh, I think they have a plot role mechanically to play, but they're just not uh, someone whose story was as uh, intriguing as I think maybe the author intended. I think that the author is kind of making a comment or trying to make a comment on society, uh, a larger comment on society with that character. And I don't think that necessarily landed uh, as strongly as she may have intended. I don't think the writing necessarily is bad, but I don't think there's anything memorable specifically about the writing. I don't think there's any lines of this book that you're going to maybe take away. And I think that as a whole, the, the book was a little bit like that. Um, uh, those are some of the issues I had with it. I, I think that um, it starts out relatively strong. And I think it kind of peters out. I think there's one or two relatively interesting characters of the four, but the other two, their stories aren't as impactful. And when you're having a story, when you're having a novel with four main characters and each character is taking approximately half the a quarter of the book, um, it's hard to really keep interest going when you have two of the lesser characters uh, towards the, the second half. Um, I think that there's a little bit of a mystery in the book and I think that that mystery is pretty clearly explicitly answered uh, by a by the introduction of kind of a side character through it. Uh, that side character borders on unrealistic uh, at times, and that was a little bit off-putting. So those are some of the issues that I had with with this book. Overall, I don't think it's necessarily a bad book. I think that you will get some stuff out of it because I think that the, like, especially like I said, the first half of it, I think is, is relatively strong. I think it kind of peters out in the second half, but I, I did enjoy, especially there's one chapter in particular. It's very depressing, but I think it's very, 
well done and well researched. So um, for who I would recommend it to, um, I think if you're fans of other familial novels, if you're fans of things like The Corrections or White Teeth, uh, I don't think this book will stay with you maybe as long. I think it's more of a light summer-ish read. I got through it relatively quickly. Uh, the language level is not particularly high or anything. Um, I will say if graphic sex is something that turns you off, there is one scene in particular uh, in the book that uh, is pretty graphic, and so I, if that's something that is not something to your liking, this may not be the book for you. But that is The Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin, and next week I will be reviewing The Final Girls by Riley Sager. Till next time, please feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and if you did read The Immortalist and feel differently about it or have stronger reactions to it, uh, please leave this leave it in the comments below. I think that was my biggest takeaway from it was just I don't think it's necessarily a bad book. I think that some people will gravitate strongly to it, more strongly than I did to it, but it just didn't connect with me on a very strong level, unfortunately. So until next time, bye.